such a time as this. And welcome to For Such a Time as This. I'm your host, Pastor James Pittman. I am in studio again with uh, our resident scholar, Abigail mm-hmm. Ruth. Uh, she has written another stunning article that was picked up on the internet, as you can see, by Illinois Family Institute. It was entitled, Don't Talk to Me About Compassion. It is, it is, um, uh, uh, it is good, as you can see. It's up to 1.7 likes on Facebook, up to 73 shares, and it is going on. So, with that said, it is a short article I have with me, as I said, Miss Abigail Ruth. Thank you, Abby. Good afternoon, Pastor James. Good afternoon. It's a short article, so Miss Abigail. Abigail Ruth, Miss Abby is going to read it for us. You can watch. You can again, as I showed you, you can look at the article up on IFI Illinois Family Institute or on for such a time as this Facebook page. Okay, Abby, you were going to do us the honor and read the short but powerful article. Yeah, let me first set the stage, though. Yes. Um, I was, what's the word? <laughs> Inspired. To write, I guess I was inspired to write this article when I found out that our Illinois lawmakers were yet again going to try to pass this hideously evil abortion legislation that legalizes um, abortion throughout all nine months of pregnancy. Uh-huh. It, they got shut down when pro-life activists turned up in by the thousands. Yep. In well, when was that, Pastor James? March or uh-huh. April? I can't remember. Uh, it's around March. It's around March. <clears throat> and, and so anyway, they now they brought it back. They did it uh, cloak and dagger style. They did it with very little, in yep. a way that um, pro-life activists didn't, had no notice whatsoever. It was just yep. uh, really deceitful the way they did it. And and so the, the Illinois House of Representatives has passed this. Um, yep. They are all, I shouldn't say all of them. But our Governor Pritzker and um, Illinois and uh, Democrats are just vowing that we are going to become the most quote unquote progressive state in the nation when it comes to abortion, which means we are going to be the most evil state. In translation, we're, we're going to kill the most babies. Yes. And he's bragging about that. So that is uh, what was on my mind when I wrote this. So yeah. the, the title of it is Don't Talk to Me About Compassion. And here it is. So pro-abortion lawmakers, hear me now. Don't talk to me about compassion. Not anymore. I don't want to hear about families being separated at the borders, LGBT suicide rates, the plight of the homeless or polar bears on melting ice flows. Not anymore. Not from you. Your compassion is phony. You who champion the dismemberment of living babies in the womb. Pro-abortion lawmakers, hear me now. Don't talk to me about civil rights. Not anymore. I don't want to hear about institutionalized racism, reparations, social justice, or white privilege. I will shut my ears to your whining about discrimination. Your concern for civil rights is phony. You who support abortion slaughterhouses strategically placed in low-income minority neighborhoods. Pro-abortion lawmakers, hear me now. Don't talk to me about justice. Not anymore. It has not escaped my notice that there are no votes to be had from the unborn. Your passion for justice is phony, you who support the slaughter of the only people in America who are truly voiceless and powerless. Pro-abortion lawmakers, hear me now. Don't talk to me about greed. Not anymore. Your contempt for greed is phony, you who fill your campaign coffers with blood money from Planned Parenthood from the Planned Parenthood Corporation and have no use for human beings who are unable to add to your war chests. Pro-abortion lawmakers, hear me now. Don't talk to me about inequality. Not anymore. Your concern for inequality is phony when a third of all black babies never make it out of the womb and you advocate treating living human beings like property. Pro-abortion lawmakers, hear me now. I won't be lectured, not by you or anyone else who supports elective abortion. Not anymore. I'm done. As long as you continue to support this blatant, barbaric injustice, I can't take you seriously. Your moral superiority is phony. You lack the moral credibility to lecture anyone about anything. Pro-abortion lawmakers, hear me now. I have four words for you from the 23rd chapter of Matthew. 
Make of them what you will. Woe to you hypocrites. <clears throat> Period. <laughs> Exclamation point. Exclamation James. point. It, you know, when, when you read this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. When I read this, it, it seems as though you've come to a point to where you recognize, and we've talked about this before. Many times. That, that trying to reason with the hard left like this is futile. They don't want to reason. They, it it, it mm -hmm. seems like it's tactics. They hide behind some moral barricades and they twist arguments and they tell you that they want choice, but they really don't. Uh, and it seems as though this, this captures the, the mindset that says it's all a lie. Your arguments are hollow and they're lies. Right. There's no point in even discussing it. Yeah. Uh, there was a comment. Um, this was posted on the um, IFI Facebook page as well as ours. And there was a comment there. And it, the one that gratified me the most says this. Um, this is what I do now. The time for tolerating them is over. Yeah. I told my daughter to just stop talking the other night. My daughter, who I always suffered to speak her own opinion, though it killed me to hear it. Mm. Not anymore. Sure, there are two opinions, God's and Satan's. Make your choice. Whew, and she told her daughter to stop talking. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not no. saying that we ought to, but on the other hand, this is the, this is the gorilla in the room. This aborting babies throughout all nine months of pregnancy, tearing limbs, arms, legs, feet, hands, yep. heads yep. off of living babies. Yep. If, if, if someone's trying to have a conversation with you about a, a particular um, oh, a topic, um, a particular political issue, yep. and they think that's okay, yep. but, how, how do you even, yep. my first question, yep. I, I, now I'm thinking, you know, there's no point in having the argument. And it's not just that there's no point. The fact that yep. sometimes when we in, even engage them and as if, as if they know right from wrong. Yep. Be be remember, and I've said this for many, many years. If I can't trust you on the life issue, right? If you think that ripping babies out of wombs at eight, nine months is rational and ethical, I don't trust you on anything. They're, they're, your moral compass is broken. It's broken. Right. So how how are we going to discuss the more complicated moral yeah. issues? If if you if this. Either, I mean, there are either two things going on here. Either you know it's wrong and you just don't care, or you don't know it's wrong. Either way, that's a, that's a problem. And if your moral compass is so broken to where is, one, you don't care that babies are ripped from the womb, or two, you don't know that it's wrong that babies are ripped from the womb, either case, to me, we don't need to discuss any other topic your moral compass is yes. broken it's done it's over it's over and so i've been saying that for many many years and people say you can't be and i remember when i was was, was talking to some family members and they were saying that we were discussing about hillary clinton and they're saying you can't be a one topic uh uh you can't judge based on one topic james I say yes i can i sure can and, and I like it like this. Um, if, if you're sitting to someone and they're talking about who's the best uh, 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 tutor for your child, okay? And the tutor believes that if the child, you know, misbehaves, he's going to stand up and punch him in his face. Now, let, let's talk about the other good qualities of this tutor. <laughs> we don't need to go any further. Th that's enough to disqualify anything else you think would be positive. Because if you're wrong on that issue, right. I, I don't care what you think. I don't, I don't care your opinion on other ones. So if you want to talk about the morality of money, the morality of immigration, the morality of nuclear war, the morality of, of, of energy, but you get this one wrong. No, we don't, we don't need to talk about energy, immigration, or nothing else. Your moral compass is broken. It's done. And it seems like what this article does, and it's, it's again, it's, it's, it's going 
semi-viral in the state of Illinois at IFI, which which all of Abby's articles seem to do. No, they don't. Most of them do. Uh, basically, when you read that, I think people are, are coming to the, if they understand it, like the person you were reading, it's that they don't have a moral high ground and stop engaging them. As if they do. As if they, they have a semblance of morality. If we have to debate ripping babies out of the womb at eight months, if we have to debate that as morality, then I'm sorry there's no help for you. There's no help for you. And, and, it's, and let's be honest, when, you, when you're a conservative and a, and a Christian, either one or the other, mm-hmm. the left is always, the left always speaks in terms of morality. Yes. Hate, no. bigotry, no. Um, equality, all these uh, Unfair justice. Unfair privilege. Unfairness. Yep. And <laughs> I don't think we can let them get away with that no. anymore. No. I, I think we have. I, I think we've no. entertained their arguments. Yeah. I I think we have allowed them to yeah. be morally superior in their own minds when nothing, the the truth, nothing could be further from the truth. So how do you end the argument? Because I may be a little harsh. Here, here's here, here's what I would do if I'm engaging in any moral top uh, conversation on any moral topic. I'm going to ask one question: You think it's okay to rip babies out of wombs at nine months? And if they say yes, I'm saying then then that's evil. You endorse evil. Conversation of morality with you is over, and I would ref- I would refuse at that point to even engage. But I've been known as being a radical. <laughs> what What do you say? I mean, how, how well, do you think you should shut? If someone wants to engage in conversation with you, yet they advocate ripping babies out of wombs at eight or nine months, how do you end the conversation? How, how do you... I, I think I, I think I say and and I think you can do this especially with family members with friends with people you know you you care about people we care about people who hold these awful awful opinions uh, and support this um, I think if you find out you start with you know what before we start talking about white privilege mm-hmm. what do you think about? The abortion of post-viable babies. What do you think about pulling their arms and legs out? Yep. What do you think about shoving a scissors in the back of their head? And mm-hmm. and I just let, before we talk about another moral yes, issue, right. let's just see where you are on that. And right. and and then I think you just be firm. You know what? If you you support that, you think that should be legal. I, you know, there's really no point in even right. discussing this other issue. See, I, and I would I would if I ever ran for office, it would be to. To just prove a point. I don't care about winning. So I'm on stage and they say, Candidate Pittman, let's talk about <laughs> uh, uh, immigrate, morality of immigration. And you, I want you to debate your opponent. And I'll say, well, I have one question. One question. Does my opponent believe that ripping babies out of wombs at eight and nine months is, is evil? And if the opponent says, no, it's a woman's choice. At that point, I would say, I refuse to discuss this issue with this person next to me because this person endorses evil and doesn't know the difference between good and evil. I'm not talking about anything other, any other moral issue. Done. And I will refuse to say anything for the rest of that debate on that topic. Then we get mm-hmm. to the next topic. Okay, fine. You don't want to talk about immigration. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about energy. Uh, let's talk about morale of energy. Uh, excuse me, moderator. I got one question. Does my opponent <laughs> still believe <laughs> that I'm not talking about anything oh morale or on this issue either? And you know what? I would go to the polls based on that. And I would have people vote on that. And you know what? I may lose. But I'm not. I'm not debate. I will not debate someone else who thinks it's okay to rip babies out of womb. And, and I think. It's like debating with a moral preschooler. Yeah. You can't have college level conversations no. with preschoolers. No. no. You're gonna lecture me about immigration when you can look at what happens with the ultrasound abortions and that mm-hmm. not turn your stomach? Yet you wanna lecture me on morality exactly. of immigration. But but how do you implement that? I would love for President Trump, whomever he does, make every issue about you think it's okay <laughs> to rip babies out of wounds at nine months. Yeah, you're the champion of the little guy, yeah, right? Wait, 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 you you, you wanna talk about immigration, morality of immigration? You will even take ripping babies out of wombs at nine months. And yet you want to lecture me about immigration? I would do it on everything. Immigration, energy, <laughs> uh, the sky, the moon, oil, anything, anything, education, anything. I would remember, I would see it over and over and over again. I, I, think, I think it is terribly uh, difficult 
to defend that. Let's just bring Me it up. Me too. And I don't think we don't we don't bring it up nearly enough. You're right. It should be every time. Everything. It should Everything. every just okay. <laughs> Where are you on yeah. this? Where are you yeah. okay? And make them come out and say, yeah. yeah, I think that should be legal. Yeah, yeah. What 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 candidate Pittman? It's two plus two four. What before we get to that? Does my opponent still believe? <laughs> I don't care what it is. <laughs> it does my opponent still believe it's okay? And I would get it. I would get to a point where everyone is sick and tired of it, and my whole campaign would be. My opponent believes it's okay for this, and I would show an ultrasound abortion. But you know what happened? ABC, CBS, NBC, they would not run the commercials because they've blocked of course. Pro-abortion, pro-abortion, I'm sorry, pro-life, pro-life. candidates mm-hmm. from running such, such uh, 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 commercials. But again, you know what I would say over and over and over again? NBC, ABC, and CBS, they are refusing to run my campaign ads. And then I would, I, everyone would, would flock to the internet to see my campaign ads, that uh, <laughs> that that this my opponent thinks this is okay and show part as much as it turns my stomach, show some of an ultrasound abortions like in the the unplanned mm-hmm. the unplanned part when they had the ultrasound abortion and that leg came off of that baby in the womb I yelled, I mean I, mean, I didn't mm-hmm. yell like whoa, because I had never you know because I can't stand watching that stuff, but I I yelled out. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. but but still, but the the really crazy thing is, a lot of times we're the other direction where we are cowed into silence yeah, by yeah. these people, and yeah. that's the 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 hypocr their hypocrisy is staggering, yeah. and we should not yeah. ever allow these people to cow us into silence. Nope. They they have no moral credibility to lecture anyone on anything. They shouldn't be in anywhere near a leadership position. Nope. Sadly. They're in charge. Yeah, but but will we? Will we? And when I say we, those who believe that life in the womb is sacred, will we have a champion that will beat this drum mm. over and over and over? And when anyone from the left tries to lecture, yes, come up with some sort of mantra. No, 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 no. No, you can't speak on morality because you think ripping mm-hmm. babies from the womb is not good. You believe evil is good. And and call it evil at this point. Right. Call it evil. It, it's so it's obvious. It so clearly is. It is. It's gone well past. It is. I, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anything, Miss Abigail Ruth. Anything else? Nope. Great I think article. I'm done. Great article as always. Oh, thank you. Um, man, I, ah, ah, well, thank you for this edition of, for such a time as this podcast, talking about this horrible issue. And, and, and we reside here in the Socialist Republic of Illinois. And the Socialist Republic uh, is marching on, there's several bills that they are pushing forth. I, I give Pritzker this, he is doing what he said. He's fulfilling his campaign promises. We are going to be the most left-leaning, progressive state when it comes to the evil vices. And abortion is on the... the, uh, SB 25, uh, is it SB 25? No, that's the one that they passed. But parental parental notification is on the table also. That wasn't part of 25, was it? No, I don't think it was. Oh, I can't remember. I I don't think it was. But in the state of Illinois, if Pritzker and the Democrats get their way... A girl, a young woman under the age of 18 will not be able to get an aspirin from school without the parental notification. But she will be able to have an abortion. Mm. You, you understand that? No to Tylenol unless your parents are notified. But you're going to have an abortion without them being notified. Right. This is the Social Republic of Illinois. We're, we're long here. But thank you, thank you, thank you again, Abby, as always. And thank you for welcome, Pastor James. listening you. on the podcast here at For Such a Time as This. Until next time. For such a time as this.